Hello folks and goats, my name is Griffin and welcome to the Command Valley. Before we begin this video, I just want to remind you that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by GameGrid. If you are looking for a way to support the channel, then head on over to the link in the description box below. It'll take you to the GameGrid's website where you'll be able to put in a full deck list, also included in the description, to their deck builder toolkit and get it shipped right to your house. If you're looking for a way to support the podcast directly, then head on over to patreon.com slash command valley. Consider joining up and getting access to our exclusive perks such as live deck techs, gameplay videos with the podcast, merch, and tons of other cool things. Now this week has been absolutely insane with Commander Legends and I can't tell you how excited I am for it. A commander has been released that just absolutely blew my mind. This commander has so much potential and has so much that you can do around it that it's almost impossible for me to make a deck tech on it. So instead we're gonna do a new kind of video where we're just gonna explore everything there is to know about Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Sakashima is three and a blue for a three one legendary creature human rogue. You may have Sakashima of a Thousand Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a Thousand Faces other abilities. The legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control and it also has partner. Now already there is just such cool things to know about Sakashima of a Thousand Faces that we'll go through it one at a time. First off, her first text allowing you to copy another one of your abilities, essentially a clone effect for one of your creatures. However, the real power is in the second text. The legend rule does not apply to permanents you control. So it's mirror gallery for you on a commander in your command zone. And the best part is it has partner. Now this partner mechanic is the reason why Sakashima has so much potential. Having partner means you can pair it with any one or two color partners, which means there's so many avenues you can take to this deck. So what we're gonna do for today is we're just gonna go over the colors. We're gonna go over the benefits to playing those colors, some really cool creatures you can play, some other cool synergies, and then we'll end off as the partners that you can play for Sakashima. With Sakashima, you can either take this of one of three directions. You can either have Sakashima as a mono blue commander and only have it as your commander, or have another blue partner as your commander as well with Sakashima. You can do Sakashima plus another commander with partner with one color or two colors that share with Sakashima. And then you can have thirdly Sakashima and then a commander with partner with two colors that aren't blue. So you potentially can do a one, two or three color deck. So let's talk about the benefits to the colors. But before we go on to the colors, let's just talk about Sakashima in general. Since Sakashima does have that text that says the legend rule does not apply to permits you control, it really pushes us to try to look at legendary creatures that we can abuse by making copies of. So a lot of these creatures that I have included in the colors are legendary creatures that you're normally not supposed to have copies of, but with Sakashima, we can get multiple of them. And this effect is very, very powerful. Now you don't just have to do legendary creatures. Sakashima is also a clone, which means it can clone any other creature and there are definitely many many creatures in magic that aren't legendary that having multiple copies of can just be very explosive so let's start off with white now white is known mostly for its mechanics it's got a lot of indestructible creatures a lot of pumping going on a lot of protection and it's got a lot of big powerful angels and creatures that make a big impact on the board god eternal oketra which allows you to make four four zombies when you cast creature spells which if you have two copies of oketra you can get two four four zombies every time you cast a creature again very powerful avacyn angel of hope which gives all of your permits indestructible while also also having indestructible itself already one avacyn is a pain in the butt to deal with but having sakashima enters a copy of avacyn just makes it that much more difficult for your opponents to deal with darien king of keldor which is a legendary creature that when you're dealt damage you create that many one one white soldier creature tokens and having two of those means that whenever your opponents deal damage to you you're just gonna get a massive army of soldier tokens Elish Norn, one of the scariest white cards that your opponents can play, gives all of your creatures plus two, plus two, and all of your opponents minus two, minus two. Now, one copy of this is already destructive, but having multiple copies of Elish Norn is really hard to crawl back from. Again, these are creatures that you're not normally supposed to have copies of, which is why they make it legendary, but with Sakashima, we can build around that, and that is just so exciting to me. Mongara the Diplomat, which is a legendary creature that gives you card draw when your opponents attack with two more creatures or cast their second spell not as explosive but can give us a lot of card draw especially in a game with three other commander players an oldie but goodie from saviors of kamigawa we've got michiko kanda truth seeker she reads whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you that player sacrifices a permanent 
having Sakashima enter as a copy of Michiko, making sure that anytime you're dealt damage, your opponents have to sacrifice two permanents, almost as good as Annihilator. We have Rhea Dawnbringer, which is a 9-mana Angel with flying at the beginning of your upkeep. You may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Having two Rhea Dawnbringers, and unless your opponent deals with both of them, you can just keep recurring your legendary creatures back from your graveyard to the battlefield. And even if you lose one of them, you can just have the other bring that one back. That's just mind-boggling. I'm just... My mind is blown. Yosei the Morning Star is a dragon spirit, and when he dies, target player skips his or her next untap step and tap up to five target permanents that player controls. Some of my favorite creatures to include are ones that have entered the battlefield or dies triggers because those are the ones that we can abuse the most. And so just imagine staring down two copies of Yosei or more, because again, when we get to blue, we'll explain how we can get more copies of our legendary creatures, but two or more copies of Yosei on the other side of the battlefield, things are looking pretty bleak. And if you are the one with two or more Yoseis, you are probably feeling pretty good. All right, so now let's talk about blue. Since Sakashima is blue, you will be playing blue, so there are definitely some cards I recommend that you put into this deck. The first and most important part of blue is clones. Sakashima herself is a clone, and when she enters the battlefield, your, the legend rule does not apply, which means we can start playing other clones that can also copy your legendary creatures. Things like Clone, Clever Impersonator, Mercurial Pretender, Phantasmal Image are just a couple of creatures in the many in Magic the Gathering that copy creatures when they enter the battlefield. The two best in this deck are going to be cards like Spark Double, which already makes your legendary creatures non-legendary when it enters the battlefield, so you don't have to have Sakashima out to copy your legendary creatures, and then Rite of Replication, which can copy a creature, but if you kick it, you make five copies instead. Magic the Gathering never intended for you to make five copies of legendary creatures, but here we are, and we're having fun. Some other fantastic blue includes are creatures that enter the battlefield and steal other creatures. Things like Sower of Temptation, Agent of Treachery, and Kaiga the Tide Star all have that same effect that allows you to take control of our opponent's creatures. And since we have Sakashima, we can steal our opponent's commanders and then make copies of it. So what we can do if our opponent is playing something like a Chulain Teller of Tales is play a Sower of Temptation, gain control of the Chulain, have Sakashima enter the battlefield as a copy of Chulain, then cast another clone as a copy of that Chulain, and now we have three Chulains, which means we are going to be drawing three cards and playing three lands every time we play a creature. Wizards, why have you done this? There are many more steel effects in blue. Mostly, they are non-creature spells. There are definitely several creature-type spells that allow you to take our opponent's creatures. Some other really good legendary creatures in blue I'd recommend you play. Arcanus the Omnipotent, allowing you to draw multiple cards and having multiple copies. As sure as you will never run out of cards. Kira the Great Glass Spinner, which counters our opponent's spells when they target a creature we control. And having two of those means that no opponent will be able to target your creatures and will have to resort to a board wipe. Empress Galena, which if you have ever seen a Empress Galena played, you know that this is the most pain in the butt card to deal with, and heaven forbid you have two of them. Gain control of two legendary creatures every turn. Holy crap, it says legendary permanent. Already, this dex makes me cry and also scream for joy. Moving on to black, we have black is known for very effective creatures, tutoring abilities, reanimation, and discard. So if you wanted to lean into black, you could have more of a Demir control deck, but some good includes in black that you could put into this deck. Miosian of Knight's Reach is something that you can make your opponents discard their hand, having multiple copies of it, meaning that you can control exactly when they discard their hand. It's just mwah, mwah, I love it. Demon Lord Bells and Lock that can draw us cards along with all of our clone spells being mostly four mana and up copying it to just get that trigger multiple times super cool Sidisi undead vizier allowing us to exploit and tutor cards right to our hand skithrith the black dragon which we can just go all in on the infect because that's the kind of people we are rune scar demon is another way to tutor cards back to your hand not a legendary creature but again one of those creatures that is so powerful that having copies of it is just insane kakusho the evening star which when it dies each opponent loses five life and you gain life equal to the life lost this way having one can be hectic enough especially if we were animating things but having two or even three your opponent's hearts will just flatline and then last up we've got gaunty lord of luxury which is a very fun card to copy stealing cards from your opponent's libraries and casting them multiple times over and over. You cannot go wrong with that. Moving on to red, they're known for their powerful creatures, big damage, massive plays, and direct spells. 
some of my personal favorite creatures in red, Itali Primal Storm, which when he attacks, exiles the top card of each player's library. Then you can cast any number of spells from among them without paying their mana cost. A very Mind's Dilation-esque effect where if we have multiple, we can cast up to eight spells potentially from, from every player's library. Cranko Mob Boss, which is just a fantastic card on its own, and having multiple copies of Cranko can assure that you will begin the turn with an army of goblins. Going on the dragon theme, we have Lathless Dragon Queen, which whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 5-5 red dragon creature token with flying. You can also buff up our dragons for one in red, but having two of those assures that every time you cast a dragon or a clone copying a dragon, we get two 5-5 dragons. Dracuseth Maw of Flames is another legendary all-star. When he attacks, it deals four damage to any target and three damage to each of up to two other targets. And having multiple copies of this means that you can wipe out most threats on the battlefield with a single attack. However, there are some really, really good non-legendary dragons that I would definitely recommend if you're playing red. The first one, Terror of the Peaks. Spells your opponents cast that target Terror of the Peaks costs an additional 3 life to cast and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control Terror of the Peak deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Having one copy of this, powerful. Having two copies of this, broken. Having three plus copies of this, indomitable. Utvara Hellkite, which is an 8 mana dragon with, whenever a dragon you control attacks, create a 6-6 six, six red dragon creature token with flying. Finishing off our red all-stars, we have Neheb the Eternal for, with Afflict 3 at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. You have multiple copies of this, deal some direct damage, and you are netting a ton of mana. Morog, Fury of the Coon that has just come out in Zendikar Rising. With a landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase. After this phase, at the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. You have two Morags and one Evolving Wilds, and you are getting four extra combat steps. You can see that Sakashima just helps you do what Red does, but better. And then last up, a non-legendary creature that definitely is something you would want to copy is Combustible Gear Hulk. When he enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If that player doesn't, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then it deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. At worst, we draw three. At best, we deal damage. Or I guess in most cases, at worst, we'll deal damage and at best, we draw three. I don't know. I guess it depends on the player that you are. Last up for green, green is best known for, for their mass pump effects, their ramp, and their card draw. So we have Silvala, Heart of the Wilds, which reads whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. And for green and tap, add X mana in any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So some card draw and some ramp on him. You may not always need to, but if you do have to, you don't complain. Vorn collects Voice of Hunger. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool for any type that land produced, and whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Now having two copies of Vorn Eclex will triple our mana, but it won't triple down our opponents not untapping their lands. But something that does go absolutely crazy with this, Nyx Bloom Ancient, the all-star car in green. Whenever you would tap a permanent for mana, instead create three times as much mana instead. Now, if you've watched my Riku deck tech, you will know that having multiple copies of Nyxbloom Ancient will just win you the game. And considering that we have a copy ability in our command zone with Sakashima, it's just, it's, it's, it's broken. It's, it's not broken. Nothing is broken. It's insane. Kogla the Titan Ape, which is a legendary ape when it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. And when he attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. And then his last text allows you to return target human you control to its owner's hand and it gains indestructible until end of turn. But having multiple copies of this can assure that we can fight creatures that are being pesky and attack in to destroy the artifacts and enchantments our players are controlling. God Eternal Ronus. When he enters the battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. And when he dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it onto its owner's library third from the top. Now you guessed it, if you have one God Eternal Ronus that has doubled the power of all your creatures and then you cast another clone copying the God Eternal Ronus, it will stack, which means you will end up with some massive creatures. But on that note, going on the pump effect, here are some really good non-legendary creatures that having multiple copies of is just crazy. Obviously we have Crater Hoof Behemoth. When he enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. And also end raise four runners, which is a seven seven with vigilance trample and haste and when you etbs other creatures you control get plus two plus two vigilance and trample until end of turn some other non-legendary green creatures to copy we have pathbreaker ibex for four green green we have a goat 
The best of all goats, when this goat attacks, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the greatest power among creatures you control and, you guessed it, it stacks. Thunderfoot Bailoth, 4 green green for a 5-5 five five with Lieutenant, as long as you control your commander. Thunderfoot Bailoth gets plus 2 plus 2 and other creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 and have trample. What's really nice about Sakashima and these pump effects is when you cast a, a Sakashima and say you copy uh, Thunderfoot Bailoth, Pathbreaker, Ibex, it is still considered your commander. So you can potentially wipe somebody out with commander damage very, very easily. Next up we have Vigor. If damage would be dealt to another creature you control, prevent that damage and put a plus one plus one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. And when it is put into a graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. Now the biggest problem with Vigor is that it does not protect itself, however if you have another copy of Vigor, they will both protect each other. And then last up, we have probably the most powerful card in green that we could play in our Sakashima deck if we're leaning into the Legendary Matters theme, and that's Reki, the History of Kamigawa. For two and a green, we have a one-two. Whenever you play a Legendary spell, draw a card. Now that we've gone through all the colors, you can see that every color has its benefits and strategies, which means Sakashima is very flexible. Now, the best thing about Sakashima is that we have partners in Magic the Gathering that are not blue, but have two colors to them, which means we can potentially make a three color deck. Now, here are some of the best multicolor spells that you can play in your Sakashima deck. Note that you would have to play these colors, but it's up to you what kind of mischief you want to be up to. Progenitor Mimic in the Simic colors. You may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it has at the beginning of your upkeep, if this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. In the is it colors we have Niv Mizzet Perun. He cannot be countered. Has flying and whenever you draw a card Niv Mizzet deals one damage to any target and whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell you draw a card. Absolutely hectic to deal with especially if you have two or more. If you choose to play Sultai, Moldroth of the Grave Tide allows you during each of your turns to play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from among your graveyard. Having two copies of this makes sure that you can cast two of each permanent type from your graveyard instead. Yarrick the Desecrated, which is a panharmonicon on a creature. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So if you're going in on the ETB effects, you can have Yarrick and then you can have Sakashima enter the copy of Yarrick, which means everything will be doubled twice. Just imagine an agent of treachery that enters the battlefield and you get to steal three permanents with just one. And then you can have another clone enter the copy of the agent of treachery and steal three more things. If you choose Bant as your three color pair, we have two lane teller of Tails, which whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield, and for three and tap, you can return to a creature you control to its owner's hand. Go all in on the creature's matters. Ramp a ton. Heaven forbid you have more than one of two lane. Animar Soul of Elements is Teamer for a 1-1 with protection from white and black, and whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Animar Soul of Elements. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one plus one counter on Animar. Having two of these out assures that you will be discounting your creatures basically to nothing, and luckily all of our clone spells are generally creatures, which means you can cast them for either one or two blue in most cases. If you have Azorius in your color pairings, you can be a terrible person and play Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth. He reads white spells you cast cost one less to cast, blue spells you cast cost one less to cast, and spells your opponents cast cost one generic more to cast. Imagine having multiple copies of Grand Arbiter and your opponents will literally never be able to play spells again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we make friends. On the other side, if you have Gruul in your color pairings, you can play Rurik Thar. He attacks each turn if able, and whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, Rurik Thar deals six damage to that player. So do you have a pesky spellslinger deck in your playgroup? Does he just like to cast instants and sorceries and board wipe every single turn? Then boy, do I have some news for you. Play Rurik Thar and then play Sakashima. Play another clone effect and you can sure anytime that opponent plays a instant or sorcery spell, it will dome them in the face for 18. It's just business, folks. Another really good include for Gruul, we have Omnath Locus of Rage, which whenever land enters the battlefield, you can create a 5-5 elemental. And additionally, if you are playing Gruul and Sakashima, you can play Omnath Locus of the Royal and go in all in on the teamer elementals, make multiple copies, draw a lot of cards. You know the biz. Now, again, all of these commanders and really good creatures are not the end all of what you can put into Sakashima. The reason why Sakashima is so beautifully designed is because there are so many options and routes you can go down. The cards that I've included are simply just my favorites that might help you in building your deck. But now, let's talk about partners. Since Sakashima of a Thousand Faces has partner, there are many, many options that you can choose for what you could pair it with. You can either choose to pair it with simply just the colors that you want, or you can have a partner commander that you would like to copy. 
For this, I have five suggestions for partners. For the Orzov pairing, we have Ravos Soul Tender. He gives other creatures you control plus one plus one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and he also has partner. So you can assure that you can play a lot of clone effects, and if they die, you can bring them back to your hand. For our Gruul partner, we have Tana the Blood Sower for two red green. Tana the Blood Sower, which is trample, and whenever Tana the Blood Sower deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1 1 green sapling creature tokens and also as partner. Tana is not necessarily the best thing that you want to copy with Sakashima, but playing Teamer gives you access to probably the best creatures with the best synergies and things you want to copy. But again, that is all up to you. For our Soul type build, we can play Rehan, Last of the Abzan. He enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it, and whenever a creature you control dies or is put into the command zone, if it had one or more plus one plus one counters on it, you may put that many plus one plus one counters on target creature. Sultai has some of the scariest creatures, including Moldrotha and Yarrick the Desecrated. So with Rehan as a partner, we can play all of those creatures plus more. Fourth up, we have Bruce Tarl, Boris Herder. For two red white, we have a 3-3 legendary creature human ally. When he enters the battlefield or attacks, target creature you control gains double strike and lifeling until end of turn, and also has partner. If you choose to play Jeskai, Bruce Tarl is probably gonna be the best partner for you. But all in all, after doing all the research, I've concluded that there is one best partner commander, especially if you want to copy this partner, and that's Vile Smasher the Fierce. For one black red, we have a 2-3 legendary creature goblin berserker. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, Vile Smasher the Fierce deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to an opponent chosen at random. Vile Smasher the Fierce is already a very powerful deck, and just having multiple copies, man, that's just absurd. Since Vile Smasher the Fierce and Sakashima will both be in our command zone, means we can set it up when we are ready for it, and always have access to that synergy. With Commander Legends releasing just around the corner, there are a lot of one color legendary creatures with partner that have been spoiled, and you could really pair any of these up with Sakashima to get the colors that you wanted. So be sure to be on the lookout for Sakashima and for any other partner to build your very own Sakashima of a Thousand Faces deck. Again, Sakashima can be built in so many ways that I hope this video has helped you to figure out exactly what colors and what strategy you want to play with Sakashima. All in all, just have an absolute blast playing Sakashima and let me know if you have any really cool combos and synergies that go along with Sakashima so people can know what they can put in their deck. Thank you to everyone who has supported us and we hope you are enjoying all the content we are releasing around Commander Legends. A quick reminder that our social media will be linked in the description box below, so if you would like to follow us on our Facebook or Twitter, then go ahead and click on those links and it'll take you right there. Another reminder that we stream Brawl every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so come on over, hang out with us, talk about Commander Legends, and have a great time. All right, my goats, appreciate you, and we will see you next time.